to the calls we go. Let's go to Tyler in Tampa. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Tyler? How you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Um, Talk to me. So quick question. I'm a Knicks fan, as, I'm, as I know you are. Um, my question is, who will be the next star to come to the Knicks via trade or free agency? Because you know they're preparing for it. They got the picks to, you know, right? So who do you think they're going to get, brother man? Who do you think? I have no idea, but I would prefer if it were Damian Lillard. He doesn't want to come there as long as Randall, uh, you know, Julius Randall is there. And, of course, um, you know, you, you got uh, Brunson. But the thing about it is that he just feels like him and Brunson playing the same position, being undersized. That's the that's the deal with that. Uh, me personally, I hope it's Shana Santa de Uh, You know, he who knows if he's going to elect to leave Milwaukee after next season. We shall wait and see. But I would love for that to happen. Right. Appreciate the call, man. Let's go to Muhammad in Toronto, Canada. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Muhammad? How are you? Good. How are you? All right. Talk to me. So my question is, when did you realize that you had to incorporate comedy into your reporting and TV persona? And was that something that came natural to you or something that you had to learn? You know what? It's just something that comes natural. I mean, I, it's not intentional even. You know how you can be talking to somebody and something makes you laugh and you think it'll make them laugh and you just are reactionary and stuff like that. I'm not a, I'm not a comedian. A lot of people call me funny all the time, but I don't view myself that way. I'm just naturally me. I am who I am. And I make sure that I'm consistent on that level with it and just give you, I feel like if I'm doing a show like this, I owe you to give you my true authentic personality. And my, my authentic personality, I find to be versatile. I can be very serious. I can be melancholy. I can be sad. I can be ecstatic and happy. I could be, a, a, you know, a, a mean SOB if you rub me the wrong way. And I can be the nicest person on the planet. If you rub me that way, that's just the way that I am. And I just try to be true and authentic with my emotions. All right. Appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. TJ you. in Atlanta. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, TJ? Stephen A. Talk to me, bro. I know, I know you remember me. Hey, look, I just want to ask you about, you. You, see, you, see, you see how you did those numbers with uh, Shannon Sharp? You did about 700000 you know? And then you got another hitter. You got Pat and Ashley Cummings. What you think about that? I'm sorry, I didn't understand your second question. I know you said I heard you say Shannon Sharp with the 727 viewers for day one, which was yeah. Labor Day. But then you asked me and then you uh, got, about and then you Pat. Got another hitter on the, another hitter on Tuesday, Pat McAfee. Well, Tell listen, Pat McAfee, that. Pat McAfee, Pat McAfee is going to be a part of the Tuesday show. The lineup is simple: it's me and and Shannon Sharp. He's going to be sitting with me the whole two hours on Mondays. Uh, Dan Olavsky would join us one hour. Ryan Clark would join us the next on Tuesdays. It would be me and Shannon Sharp again. Pat McAfee would join us for a segment or two. Paul Feinbaum may join from time to time. Wednesday's going to be me and Mad Dog Russo. Looking forward to Jeff Saturday. Uh, you know, before he took the Indianapolis job with the Colts last yeah. year, uh, he was with uh -huh. us. Thursday is going to be Orlovsky, uh, Dan Orlovsky with his own day, and we'll have a few people as well. I love Chris Canty. I'm looking forward to bringing him on the show. Bart Scott could be a contributor to the show. Let me not forget Kimberly Martin, who comes on during the NFL season, doing an outstanding job for us. So that list goes. And then on Fridays, Ryan Clark. And I'm hoping to get his boys from the pivot to join me as well because I got a lot of love. Uh, for for Crowder and for Fair Taylor as well. So one, I don't have a one more thing, I think I think I think everybody want to know is Shannon Stark going to be on for the NBA season or no or just NFL? No, just NFL. He's going to be Monday and Tuesdays. He's got Club Shay Shay, which is very important to him, which he owns and operates now. Um, and once the NFL season's over, obviously that's something that's very important to him that he wants to focus on. And plus, I got my NF NBA lineup. Uh, Mad Dog Russo's still going to be there. J.J. Reddick's going to be there. Kendrick Perkins is going to be there. Monica McNutt is going to be there. Plus, I'm adding a few people, in it, but I won't make that announcement as of yet. It'll be a surprise. But I'm adding a couple of people for the NBA season as well. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah. dream team. You know what I'm talking go. about? I got you. I appreciate oh, the call, man. Bill in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Bill? Hey, Stephen A. I'm a professional race car driver, but I want to stop in and talk to you about prime time and uh, what the impact is, not just to the football team. Obviously, see a 2-0, it's just two games, but what the whole family and he has done for the community. Hiring him is straight-up economic development, and I think it's going to also lead to reverse hiring inequalities, recruiting inequalities, 
And uh, someone better sign that man, Ed Reed, because I think he he might not be able to do exactly the same of, of Prime, but I think he's well, well, not well, too far well, behind. Let me, well, let me say, Bill, first of all, I'm a fan of Ed Reed's as a person, and obviously he was a sensational Hall of Fame player. What I would yeah. tell you is that when he got hired by an HBCU and he was so outspoken about the facilities and what was the what 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 you know what he was deprived of, that was a big deal. And see, sometimes we all talk about we talk a lot of stuff, right? It's Bethune Cookman, if I remember correctly. We talk a lot of stuff, and this is what we yes. have to understand. You, when somebody hires you. You're an extension of them by representation and association. All truths are not made to be told. That doesn't mean you go to you or anybody else and lie. I don't lie about Disney or ESPN or anybody else. But what I won't do is tell you all our business either. If I have a conversation with executives, that's between me and them. If I have a conversation between my colleagues and my teammates, that's between them and I. It's not for everybody to know. And it's not insulting you by not telling you something that you're not you're not supposed to be privy to. And so what happens is, is that when you do that, other people come along and they say there's a level of trust that we may not have in you because you're a wild card, because the second you get upset and displeased, you're going to go and blabber it out to everybody else. And that's going to put us in a compromise, a position and we may not want that. A lot of times you see people coming at me, right, Bill? And they'll say, yeah. you know what? He's selling out. I mean, he's a company man or whatever the case would be. And my point is, why the hell wouldn't you be a company man if you're working for the company? Because if you're not, True. what you're doing is you're saying you can't be trusted. Now, I can go up to the honchos all the way up to Burbank, California, by the way. I can go upstairs and complain about a lot of things. But one of the reasons that they could sit down and have a conversation with me, okay, is because they trust that I'm not going to go out in public and sing like a bird our personal inside business. Because when you do that, not only do you inhibit your ability to grow in a professional realm because you've sent the message that you can't be trusted. What you've done is you've turned around and you've encouraged others to possibly go that route, knowing good and damn well there's no way in hell they can get away with it. And see, this is why I despise. There's a, there's a couple of people in this business. No, it's not Dan Levertard. That's my brother. I love him. But there's a couple of people who will remain nameless. I don't give them the time of day. I don't talk about them, but I can't stand their bastard asses. I can't stand them. They're sorry, no good bastards that I never talked to in life because they're the kind of people, A, they lie all the time, and B, they do it for public consumption so the public can side with them, knowing that they're giving off the impression that that's the way to go about handling things, sending you down a dead-end road. I'm not selling out. I'm looking out. I'm showing you a path towards prosperity because if you go down this route, you might get your 10 or 15 seconds or even minutes of fame where you looking good and everybody's patting you on the back and you sticking out your chest like you did something right. But the second it subsides, your ass can't be trusted and you've let everybody know it. And now what you aspired for is no longer obtainable because you showed a flaw in your character. But they're not telling you that. And what I'm saying is I'm telling you that because I made it. And because I've made it and I've been fortunate and blessed enough by God to be in this position where I can disseminate a message to everybody. I'm saying, yo, I'm trying to look out. I'm telling you, you can't do that and prosper. It won't work. They'll get you. If not sooner, a little later. But they'll get you. That's what I'm saying. You feel me? Yeah. All right, man. Take care of yourself. Yuli in Brookline. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. So Deion Sanders has started off successfully at Colorado. Are there any other former athletes who would like to see get into the coaching realm for football or basketball? Me personally, I think that Eddie George at Tennessee State, I'd like to see what he continues to do. 
Um, I'd like to give him an opportunity to see what what he brings to the table. Um, I, I look at him from that standpoint. And obviously, when you know when you think about basketball, there's plenty of players. I mean, I think about Jerry Stackhouse, who was down at Vanderbilt. I think about Chauncey Billups in the NBA right now. I hate the fact that he's the coach of the Blazers. I saw him at the, Deion, at the game in Colorado this past weekend. Chauncey Billups and I have been friends for a long time. And I tell him all the time, I can't stand the fact that he is the coach there. I wanted him to be a president of basketball operations because I know how intelligent he is about the game of basketball and how he can build a program. Coaching, yeah, you can reach youngsters and they can obviously galvanize themselves around you because you're giving them the guidance and tutelage necessary. But there's always an executive or two or even an owner that might be in your way. When you're the president of basketball operations, it's a lot harder for people to get in your way. And that's why I wanted Chauncey Billups in that in, in that situation. But there are others. Sam Mitchell, who's on NBA radio. He was a former coach of the year in Toronto. I think he would make a hell of a coach, um, obviously. So Lindsey Hunter, who used to play in Detroit and is trying to do some things. I'd love to see him there. Sam Cassell, an assistant coach in Philly, now in Boston. I would love to see him get a head coaching opportunity. There's plenty of dudes that I think will resonate and resonate in a very profound fashion. And I sincerely hope that they get those opportunities. Thanks a lot, man. Take care. Vaughn, you're in San Francisco, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, Vaughn? How are you? Good. How are you, Stephen A.? Talk I just wanted to ask a quick question about how you think the Chiefs are going to do this season. Your brother from another mother, uh, Travis Kelsey, is out, That's and I'm a huge Chiefs mother. fan. I'm a little worried. Well, you should be a little worried because you ain't got a snowball's chance in hell of doing anything without Travis Kelsey. You don't have receivers that can catch the ball. And I like Gray and Bell from the tight end spot subbing for Patrick Mahomes. I'm sorry, subbing for Travis Kelsey, but that's not going to be enough. As great as Patrick Mahomes is, the bottom line is this. You don't longer have Eric Bieniemy there helping Andy Reid call plays, so that's a that's a hindrance. And then Travis Kelsey being out, even though he's not expected to be out long. So I look at it from that perspective, and I say, you know something? You need some help. And look at how loaded the AFC is. I think Kansas City would unquestionably make the playoffs. I think that would definitely happen. But I also look at them and I say Cincinnati, Baltimore, Cleveland, Miami, New York, Buffalo, Jacksonville, um, Tennessee, even though they just lost. I just think the road to prosperity is much, much harder. And unless they get Travis Kelsey back and an additional weapon at the wideout spot who can really be be a reliable ball catcher, I think that's what's required. That's just my personal opinion. Last, yeah. I right. pre- go ahead, man. Go ahead, make your point real quick. Go ahead, buddy. And, 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 and one last thing, two, one one last. Do you think Cardarius Tony can be a wide receiver one? And number two, Stephen A. Can we please have the Dallas Cowboys lose next week? It killed my week this week. Please, man. Dallas Cowboys ain't going to do a damn thing. Don't worry about them. They won't let you down. They'll mess up when it's time. Trust me on that. Last call, Sylvester in Denver. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, What's up, Sylvester? How you doing? Hey, how you doing there, Stephen A? Love the content of the show. Thank you, bro. Go ahead. And, uh, big, big ups to the Buffaloes here. My question for you is, what do you think would be the biggest surprise to come out of this NFL season? Mm, good question. Um, you know what? I think the Detroit Lions are a team to be reckoned with. Even though it was against the Chicago Bears after watching Jordan Love in Green Bay yesterday. Because, you l- listen, Aaron Jones, Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and those boys, that defense is still there. That offensive line is still there. I can't ignore that. Um, we can't sleep on the Saints. Because they got a defense, and Derek Carr, he ain't Drew Brees, but he's a decent quarterback. I would tell you that Detroit is the person is the team that I would pick as the surprise. But I'd keep my eyes on Jacksonville because I love the chemistry that appears to exist between Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley. I love the chemistry that appears to exist between them. So we shall see. All right? Take it easy, my man. Thank All you right. so much. Take it easy. Thanks.